Good morning, San Francisco. Good morning. I'm deeply honored to be here this morning representing His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the Central Tibetan Administration, and the Office of Tibet. I'm particularly grateful to Leader Pelosi for taking time off her busy schedule to be with us this morning. Leader Pelosi has been one of our biggest, strongest, and oldest friend in the U.S. Congress. Can we all have a round of applause and gratitude to Leader Pelosi? Today, on the 56th anniversary of the Tibetan National Uprising Day, our thoughts and prayers go out to all those who have sacrificed their lives for Tibet, as well as for those who continue to suffer under Chinese repression and occupation in Tibet. Just this past week, we witnessed another Tibetan, a woman from Amdo Ngaba province, commit self-immolation. Nojukla is the first case of self-immolation this year in 2015, and she joins 136 other Tibetans who've self-immolated since 2009. Let's all unite and work together in ensuring that the 47-year-old Nochugla, her sacrifice, as well as the sacrifices of all the other Tibetans who've given up their lives, do not go in vain. Why are Tibetans being forced to take such extreme measures as self-immolation? What are their demands and aspirations? Tibetans are self-immolating because they're saying enough is enough, that they can't take any more of the Chinese government's policies of political repression, religious suppression, economic marginalization, cultural assimilation, and environmental destruction of Tibetan Tibetans. Six decades of harsh Chinese government policies have completely alienated Tibetans. They long to see their beloved leader his Holiness the Dalai Lama returned to Tibet and secure genuine autonomy and self-rule that would allow Tibetans the freedom and right to preserve their religion, culture, language, environment, and the community. However, the Chinese government simply does not get it. Rather than recognizing the futility of their policies, they are instead employing even more draconian policies and measures aimed at further crushing the Tibetan people. For instance, there is a deep and pervasive level of surveillance that now closely monitors the movement and activities of every Tibetan. This was also mentioned in the Sikyong's March 10 statement just read out earlier. New passports to Tibetans and are either being denied or those that do have documents, those are being revoked. Spies and informants are placed in every villages and towns. Monasteries and nunneries are tightly controlled. Artists, intellectuals, and officials with less than 100% loyalty to the state are being arrested. Tibetan nomads who once freely roamed the grasslands are now being forced to live in permanent settlements and shanty towns. Han Chinese are being encouraged to move to Tibet and Tibetan areas, and Tibetans are becoming a minority in their own homeland. Tibetan language is now being uh, discontinued in schools. Resources are being extracted without regard to the well-being of the environment and the Tibetan people. The state is even interfering in the selection of high reincarnate monks with government officials forcing their selection onto the people. Lastly, Beijing has not made any serious efforts to restart the dialogue process with the representative of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, and the Tibetan leadership. The process has been stalled since January 2010. As grim as the situation in, inside Tibet is, Tibetans, however, are persevering. The Tibetan resilience and spirit continues to be really strong. We take sustenance from a 2,000 plus history of Buddhist 
civilization and heritage, Tibetans have weathered previous threats from China and other neighboring countries, and we will outlast and overcome the current communist Chinese regime as well. There will never be stability in Tibet and China as long as the Chinese leadership does not acknowledge and address the legitimate grievances of the Tibetan people and as long as they persist with their current hardline policies towards Tibet. We are ready to end our struggle if a peaceful and mutually beneficial solution is reached. The Chinese government should know, however, that Tibetans have the strength, the will, and the resource to carry on a struggle for another 50 years or more if required. While the world is being swept in a flame of violent extremism by individuals and organizations that have resorted to violence as a means to further their goals, Tibetans under the leadership of His Holiness the Dalai Lama continue to pursue our cause peacefully, non-violently, and through dialogue. The Tibetan leadership and people will never waver and compromise on these core principles. The international community and foreign governments should recognize and support Tibet so that Tibetan freedom movement becomes a shining beacon of light for all other communities that are also fighting for their rights. Yes to the Tibetan way, yes to the non-violent way, and a definite no to the ISIS and Boko Harams of this world. Tibet and Tibetans will prevail. Tibetans will prevail because we have truth on our side. We have something that no one else has. We have His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, who is Gandhi, Dr. Mandela, and Dr. King rolled into one. His Holiness is a force of morality, a prophet of peace, and a world leader who will guide the Tibetans and end their suffering. We will persevere, we will prevail, because we have chosen a path of non-violence, dialogue, and have proposed a settlement to the Chinese leadership that takes the interests of both the Chinese government and Tibetans. The middle way approach rejects the extremes of separation of Tibet from China and the current status quo, which if unresolved, will lead to the complete assimilation of Tibetans and Tibet into China. By giving up separation for self-governance and genuine autonomy and control over key issues that really matter to Tibetans, His Holiness, and the Tibetan leadership have adopted a far-sighted and pragmatic approach which is the only viable approach to resolving the Tibet issue. Lastly, Tibet will prevail, Tibetans will prevail because change will come to China. Though the current PRC government is close to becoming the longest ruling government in the history of the world, cracks are appearing. We can see cracks appearing. The corruptive, corrosive, and the small circle of uh, elite that dominates power in China, that whole system is coming under stress. So change will come, and eventually these stresses will boil over and undo the current system and regime. And lastly, I wanted to say that the Chinese government, they have a very unique opportunity, a limited opportunity in terms of time, to really engage with the Tibetan leadership, with His Holiness. Rather than attacking His Holiness, the Chinese should reach out to Him. Rather than seeing His Holiness as part of a problem, they should see His Holiness as a solution. Rather than viewing the Tibet issue as an intractable problem, the Chinese should view it as eminently solvable, Rather than waiting out His Holiness, hoping that with His passing, the Tibet issue will disappear, they should engage, engage with His Holiness. Because His Holiness is really the best partner, the best ally that the Chinese government has in resolving the Tibet issue. And on this important 
political day for Tibetans, I urge the Chinese government to reach out, meet us halfway at least, and let us all work together to end the suffering of the Tibetan people. Lastly, long live His Holiness Dalai Lama, and may all the aspirations of Tibetans inside Tibet be fully realized. Thank you so much. On behalf of San Francisco Team Tibet and the organizers and everyone here, we also like to offer kata.